on on the WeCamp. Additionally, let me recall that uh, as usual, I have for you crosswords, so I have questions to ask you about some uh, about some topics that I think are very important, and uh, for me, it is feedback that I can use uh, to make sure that everything that you can just follow me. I think that um, especially um, there is one thing that I see there is a problem to 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 understand and to follow me. The the, the problem the uh, the problem is related to the, the dependency injection. I'm not going to to discuss this topic today because uh, for today the agenda is completely different. But let me ask you again because still I'm. Um, still, I, there is a problem with uh, getting from you a proper dancer. What condition decides about necessity to use to use dependency injection? It must be something that uh, that that we have no doubts that that it's uh, that we must be sure you and uh, you and I we all of you must be sure that the dependency injection is the pattern that must be applied. Uh, for some scenarios, especially the scenarios we have uh, in the task one, we discuss it partially today during the morning um, lesson. But let me now ask uh, ask this question again. Second question that is related to this to make sure that everyone can uh, everyone uh, understand the problem. It is. Uh, it is this question. Uh, may I interrupt you? Yeah, OK, uh, of course. Due to I uh, investigated uh, all of our previous lectures, and on every lecture, there was a question about conditions that are necess necessary to use dependence injection. And at every lecture, uh, proper answer uh, didn't occur. So we would like to ask you if you can provide us with such uh, answer to it that we can make our first task proper to uh, give you. Uh, yes, I, I, because yes I, it, it's pointless to ask us for the sixth time about it and uh, don't tell us what should we do. I know that the university studies isn't about giving they're giving the fish to the students, but we didn't even get the rod to have this fish. Yes, but I think that uh, today we don't have time to get back to this uh, to this topic. I asked this question many times, and uh, all of the times I uh, I have I I hadn't uh, get any answers from you. Therefore, I am still asking. I think it's also for you the the homework. Uh, I'm not expecting very precise answer. I'm just expecting answer that uh, that you understand what the problem is, and uh, because the problem is addressed by the by the task one, you must add, you 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 had to address this this problem during the task one. But the deadline we are after the deadline of the task one. <clears throat> Therefore, uh, I'm asked about it today at the laboratory, but you said that. It's not time for asking about that. Yes, because it's late. Previously, we uh, you have appropriate you have appropriate uh, example in the code in the TP repository. There's an example. This example we discuss in detail during during the lecture. So just recall the lecture. Just record the the the, the recordings from the lecture. We discuss this topics uh, during the the seminar many times, and also we discuss this topic during the special. A consultancy session. I'm not sure if you if you attended this this session, but now uh, it should be solved. Actually, I expect that it should be solved. But this is an opportunity uh, just to get uh, activity points. I think it's it's uh, it's 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 for you just uh, to get this to get this point and for me that at least everyone uh, everyone understand. I can promise you. Okay, let's answer this question and uh, recall me this question in a couple of minutes. I try to uh, I try to discuss a special scenario using the code 
but not dependence exactly the dependency injection, but something that it's uh, instead of dependency injection. I ask about it during this uh, during today morning lesson. So uh, and uh, as uh, something uh, in context of this of this uh, example, I pro I try to provide answer to this question. But now let's let's answer by yourself. Provide reasons. Two reasons. It is very clear, clear reasons uh, uh, why, uh, what reasons to, to, to. Concrete, to, because concrete in English means baton in Polish. You mean you want us to give a baton? I don't know, I don't understand. Baton okay. type? Baton. Concrete is not <laughs> usually. Okay, it's baton. Uh, yes, but uh, actually the words uh, have uh, many meanings, not only one. One of one of these, it's concrete. It's it's a uh, but concrete type. It means it is not abstract type. From English to English. Understand? It's clear. No, no, same thing. Usually, this word we are okay, using. So, a concrete is a hard substance that is used in the building and is made by mixing sand, water, small stone, and chemical. Okay, okay, but this is one. It is one meaning, and I, I agree with this meaning. But with this meaning, but another meaning is that is something that is concrete type. That it's type that we can is not abstract type. Never mind. If you can, if you can, if you can provide another word that could be used in this in this case. Can you provide any any other word? No, I don't understand the question. So, so I try to uh, explain you. Concrete type it means it is not abstract type. That it is uh, uh, provide. Actually, this this question this question also contains the answer. Okay, let's go. Let's go for 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 today because today we have lesson number six, and we must address the problems that we have, that we uh, uh, we haven't we hadn't addressed precisely during the uh, during the lesson number five. I think about the reflections and serialization. Discussing the reflection, discussing the reflection. Uh, let me get back also to the question. Concrete type cannot be used as an argument of the new operator. Okay, actually, you have answers in this in this sentence. It's not question. Actually, it's it's my it's my, my mistake. But now let me ask you another question. So you are right that it's hard to understand because it's not question. It's it's answer to previous question. Okay, so let's go to the next question. What is the what is reflection? Definitely, it is its question, and uh, we addressed this question during previous previous lesson. Uh, so re reflection and serialization, both topics. Uh, we must uh, get back to both topics because we hadn't uh, time during the last number five. Additionally, we in in front of us uh, there is. Uh, Anonymous function and extension method. We must discuss some uh, topics related to the functional programming. So let's go to the, to the reflection. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, one more, one more uh, explanation related to the concrete type. Uh, actually, we have two two types that we cannot call concrete. Uh, one, it is generic type. Let me recall you that without uh, providing appropriate parameter for the generic types, it is also impossible to create instances of this of the type. Uh, additionally, uh, not concrete type is, as I said, uh, abstract class. In both of the classes, we can, but, uh, uh, for both of this uh, of this situation of this construct in the language, we we are using uh, the word concrete 
uh, to say that, uh, that the class could be could be used. Okay, so let's go to the to the reflection. Actually, we have uh, attributed attributed test class that is, has been added uh, to to the test to the TP repository as the unit test and uh, custom attribute and we are we are discussing we must discuss this this class let me uh, go to uh, to definition here this functional uh, data streams and reflection and attributed class let me recall you it's not this one solution touch repository so the question was what the reflection is the next question is how to inject because the next related to dependence injection problem we have it's a dependence injection let me ask you how to inject in the dependence injection what actually uh, how to implement injection it is also the word that has many meanings uh, but uh, in the, the dependency injection, uh, uh, sometimes dependency injection we are using together with the with the reflection. And the question is about the how to how to inject uh, without using an assignment instruction. <sighs> Answering the question, what the reflection is, as I said previously, it is uh, it is processing the source code as a data. So we are treating, during the processing, we are treating the source code as a data and processing and processing the source code. Uh, additionally, uh, uh, and it means that, uh, that uh, from, the, from the source code, we can read some features describing the source code. Uh, in this example, for example, the, in, this, in this example, it is assumed that we can attach a property that calls value to any type, to any actually to any object. So sorry, not to any type, but to any object during the runtime. So during the runtime, we can assign a reference on an object to the parameter data source, and we can use this property to assign selected value. Selected value. It is one example. I will ask you about it. Difference between tightly couplet and largely couplet uh, types and uh, layers and many things. What is the difference between the tightly couplet and largely couplet? And it's an example where it's a uh, largely couplet in the unit test. Unit test. It's reflection here. Uh, but check where it is attach property find our references here you can see that we can postpone providing the name of the uh, of the property we are actually assigning up to the runtime here we are using it's hard coded but uh, we can we can we can provide we can provide the name the value at runtime in this place for example we can use variable that provides the name we are using to to access to to assign the value to assign the value we must uh, we must um, for the selected property that the name is provided during the runtime, uh, we must treat uh, the code as a data. Therefore, here we are uh, recovering the type of an object. Here, the type is not defined, 
by here by here uh, we can we can get uh, we can get uh, the type and actually treat the type of the object as a data and uh, for example find appropriate property that the name is provided by this but these parameters uh, and use this property and this attached to this property it attach this property to assign the value using the using the the, the, the main source and using the get get a value and property info actually property info it is it is representation of the source code features in this case it is information about the property we can use uh, we can use to uh, to assign the value and to set the value or, or to get the value because in the property we have getter and setter why am uh, why am getting back to this example because i think it's very important during the last task in the last task you will deal with the XAML language. And XAML language refers to the reflection. Actually, there is many points that we need to use reflection. Therefore, this example, it is very, I think it's very important to get more information about, about, uh, about reflection. It is uh, one example now. Let me uh, let me get back to the dependence injection, and actually the place where instead of dependence injection, we are using just uh, object-oriented programming. In this uh, method, it is class that I'm using uh, for the unit test. You can follow me on the code on your computers. But uh, it is the class that we are using for, for testing. It is static class. Uh, so actually, we can distinguish static class, const uh, uh, concrete classes, and we can also distinguish abstract classes. Additionally, we have interfaces that did something like abstract class, but the difference is that it's impossible to provide any implementation information in the in the interfaces. Uh, abstract classes is something between the interface and the concrete class. But uh, here you can see that create object is this factory method that actually creates object from two types. Uh, Selection of the types we can uh, we can select appropriate types using a parameter. It's like task one that also has parameter, and it is expected that the parameter is abstract. Instead of abstract parameter, we can provide uh, we can provide a parameter that in this case it is enumeration. Not sure, but let me pick definition. Pick definition. Uh, uh, oh, here is definition is above. The okay. Definition is you can see it is it's just abstract. Um, it is just an enumeration. So using this enumeration, we can use the switch to select appropriate type and return and return appropriate uh, reference to an object. In this case. We are using object type. It's, it's time that's compatible with all of the times. There is there is no need to provide the common base type that we are deriving the classes using in this factory. Uh, using this factory. So uh, why here we can use one here we can use new operator. Let me get back to the question because we know the types. It's obvious. We found the knowledge, we found the access to the definition. It is impossible to create an object even if the type is concrete. 
even if the type is concrete, even if it's not abstract, of it's not generic, we can create an object referring to this type. We can go to the definition, go to definition and see that the definition is located somewhere over here. It's in this, the same project. Therefore, it's easy. Therefore, it's easy to uh, to create to get access. If the type is not is not accessible, because uh, it is in a independent project, and we cannot refer to the project, it is impossible. This approach is impossible. Therefore, the first reason from the from the two I mentioned previously is this that the type is the, in the project that it's compiled later it is compiled after the library where we need to create where we need to refer to to an object therefore we must postpone the creation of the object to the place where the type is known it is first reason second reason Referring to my previous question, actually it is answer to the question, not the question. The second reason is that we uh, we need to use uh, here abstraction and abstract type, not concrete type, but abstract type. If we need to provide the type that it's in the layer above. In this case, in theory, it is possible to get access, but if the type is defined in the layer above, of course, we are breaking the rule related to the layers. Therefore, we must uh, we must uh, uh, we must avoid any solutions. We must avoid any any situation where the type where we are created, we are re referring the type in the layer below, but the type is defined the layer above. It is second, it is the second, uh, it is the second uh, reason. Therefore, in the task one, in the task two, it, it will be possible. In task one, actually, it is also possible if, for example, you are creating in the data layer object that uh, that has definition in the logic layer. In this case, you must refer from the data to the uh, to the logic, and actually, uh, we don't have layers at all. It is two reasons. Try to try to remember these reasons. One reason is because the type is defined in independent project. And we can get access to this project because it must be compiled later. It's impossible to get access to the definition that compiler must compile later. Second, it is uh, second. It is uh, trying to uh, trying to create an object from the type that it's in the layer above. Usually. The situation is always the same. The type is inaccessible because of layering. Usually, we are using uh, additional projects also to provide the layers, also to implement layers. Is it clear? Or maybe there's something that I should add once more. <clears throat> So the difference, the next question, the next my question is, uh, what is the difference between object-oriented programming and, uh, and uh, uh, dependency injection? My difference is that in object-oriented programming, something like this is possible. Using the pattern dependency, dependency injection means that uh, 
selection like this is impossible because the type definition access to the definition of the type is impossible it's it's a uh, uh, definition it's <clears throat> as is unknown so it is a reflection and in case of the reflection we have an opportunity to get back to the dependency injection i think that there will be possibility to get back to the reflection during the next lessons related to the uh, to the presentation layer but let's now go to the serialization if there is no questions for this topic and you understand what the concrete type is the question is what is serialization now we must start discussion about serialization so let's try to answer because it's it's a term that should be well known First method I have to explain what the serialization is, it is self-control self serialization. It is this class. Unfortunately, this class is uh, this class is located in the unit test, but it should be located, I think, in the in the library. But uh, doesn't matter where it is located now uh, because the tp repository it is for education purpose it is not it's not uh, it is not a production environment but still i think uh, that you can provide an issue to move the self control serialization from the from the unit test to the library maybe someone will be We'll be happy happy to address this issue. Uh, I'm waiting for your feedback also this way. But uh, I don't know what you are, what you know about the serialization. But uh, before I provide my definition, what the serialization is. Usually we are saying something like that, that is conversion of the object into stream of bits. Of course, it's not true because it's impossible to convert an object because the object, it is something that uh, we don't have access actually. In any languages, we don't have access to the object. We can create object and we can refer to the object but we cannot have physical access to the object. Object usually is implemented by the environment. It is set of, and is set of, uh, it is part of memory. But let's see, uh, but about the uh, first, uh, it is first answer. Second, it is for second reason is that uh, actually we must talk about serialization during the design time. But talking about the object, we need to uh, we need to talk um, about the runtime. Uh, so let's talk about about the classes. Let's talk about the design time where we have this class. And the question is, what we must convert into the into the uh, stream of bits. Uh, to serialize to serialize the object that is created from this class of course talking about the serialization always we must talk about the runtime because it is runtime operation it is not it's it is described by the design time but it must be executed during the runtime it is it, it's it's obvious uh, but during the during the runtime, we must talk about the values. Maybe I think that we should get back to the reason why we are using serialization. Usually, to use the serialization, we are expecting that from the stream of bits, we can recover 
an object. We can recover an object, so we can create an object uh, using the using the um, using the stream of beads. But of course, let me get back to the dis discussion pre uh, previous. To create an object, we are using new operator. Actually, additionally, we can use also the reflection. It's also possible to use the reflection to create an object. I don't have an uh, example here, but it's possible, as you know, it's, it's possible to use, use reflection to create an object, to establish, to instantiate a class. But we must instantiate the class. We must know the class. It is, it's obvious in all of the languages that first we must know the class to I instantiate the object and after that we must, so we are not uh, restoring, we are not uh, uh, recovering an object, we are restoring the state of the object. Usually, as in this example, we have constructor and the constructor is, it's possible, it's constructor, it's, uh, it's responsible uh, not to create an object, just to assign a state to the object, assign a values, the beginning values. Of course, the values could change during the runtime, but uh, at the very beginning, first, the, each object must have starting points, starting, starting state. Uh, so, very important question is, what is an object state? But before answering to this, Question, let me ask next one to keep you active. Who is responsible for the current definition of what is the state of the object? Because the state of the object, the term is not, it's not very clear. It's not very, it's, we cannot provide, we cannot provide the definition in context of the language using only the terms the from the language uh, answering to the previous question what is the object we can say the object state is a set of values that we must know to recreate re recreate to to recover uh, to recover the object and to recover all the all of the important values it is set of values and uh, if it's a sort of values here, for example, we have three properties, max income, mean income, and average income. From th this example, we can see that, of course, if we are talking about this class, an object we created from this class, we can distinguish three values, max income, minimum income, and average income. So the question is, do we really need three values to recover to recover the object? Of course, no, because this value, this value, first, it's read only, so it is impossible to assign any new value, uh, but it's calculated value. If it's calculated value, well, doesn't make sense to it doesn't make sense to to save the value for the for the future for the for recovering an object therefore in this case the state of the this object uh, the state of the object is uh, created by two values this value max income and minimum income we need two values in the stream of beads, represent in the stream of beads to recreate an object, to uh, recover the object from the stream. Uh, therefore, uh, we need, uh, of course, it's 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 possible to use. Uh, usually, it is possible to use the constructor because creation of the object, in any cases and in any languages, we need to use constructor. In this constructor, we need values but uh, it is not very useful for uh, for um, serialization purpose because in serialization during the serialization and deserialization we are referring to the stream of bits uh, therefore 
it is uh, we can solve this problem using additional uh, ad additional constructor that provides serialization info and we can using the serialization info to restore the values that is vital for the state is vital for the state of the of the object so first we can create we can create an empty object and after creation of the unempty object we can assign the values or additionally using this constructor we can uh, we can create an object and after that from the serialization info we can add we can assign this you can assign we can recover the values that that uh, that we need for uh, for the state of the object to uh, to get back to the state of this object where uh, to, to the moment that we save it as a stream of bits so what is who is responsible of course we are responsible we programmer it is our responsibility uh, to to know what is the state of the object what properties what fields what variables we must uh, consider for serialization to uh, to convert into the stream of bits to recover an object and actually to recover an object in a state uh, during serialization, before serial, just before serialization, just before serialization. We are responsible. If we are responsible, therefore, we should also provide answer to the question, okay, how to provide this information? What is responsible? Uh, uh, what is uh, what is uh, uh, required? What is what is vital? Which values that uh, usually a class is a complex type, so it contains many it contains many values. Therefore, we must select the values that are important for us, and because we are responsible. We must also provide appropriate functionality, self-control serialization, its functionality, its method that is defined by this interface. I serializable. Big definition. You can see that this interface provides definition of this method. But it doesn't provide the interface doesn't provide any information about this constructor but we need this constructor to deserialize the object so for serialization it's it's enough to to have this method and in this method we are also using similar similar types related to the serialization and assigning the values from the local variables and properties to the serialization info. Uh, here it is uh, get double and uh, and uh, oh, in both cases it, it's 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 get it is get get uh, double reset the property so here so sorry serialization if it is its constructor but its method it, it is constructor of this of this uh, type and we are using this constructor during the deserialization and this method during the serialization it is we call this method self uh, self serialization because we provide using this add value we provide functionality. We are responsible to provide appropriate functionality to uh, 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 functionality to serialize the values from the state. Okay, it is self self for self serialization. We can use uh, there is. Uh, 
self-control serialization, we can investigate this class. I'm not going to, to discuss it. Uh, sorry, it is test method. It is uh, self-serialization uh, custom formatter. It is this one, Q2 definition. Custom formatter is a solution we can use to control the serialization. For example, if for us it is the most important thing, it is uh, the syntax of the stream of bits we are using. For example, there is another question related to this. self -serialization. The question is, how can we influence which values uh, will be included in the object, um, object state? Of course, of course self-serialization is one only one but there's another two methods maybe you know try to recall because we are using all of the three methods we are using in all of the languages therefore it is not it's not uh, very important for us the important is the definition of the state because event in the task one it is something that describe it is used to describe the state of the process it is similar similar term state of the object and state of the class it is it is similar we can we can distinguish of course the um, differences because in cause called uh, talking about the class we are talking about about the language but talking about the process we are talking about something abstract but in bo on, uh, both cases we are talking about the values in talking about the state uh, of the process, we are also taking, st t talking about the values. Uh, okay, so this uh, custom uh, custom formatter uh, can be uh, uh, implemented using the formatter. Formatter is, it is a class provided by the by the .NET. Go to definition. It is from .NET. It is to to make our life easier in case. We must control, we must control not only what we are going to serialize, but uh, in the case that uh, the result of serialization must also be fully controlled. Usually we are using a selected format of the serialization. For example, XML, uh, XML uh, files, or we are using um, JSON files or YAML files, any other, any other uh, syntaxes, any other forms of the text. Maybe it is. It's very important. Next question because I said text. I said text, and to make sure that we are all of us are talking about the same. When does uh, uh, when does a bit stream become a, become text? What is required that the bit stream is text? Because very popular serialization method converts the state of the object. Let me stress: state of the object uh, converts into the stream of characters into the text so still so we we can ask we must ask uh, we must ask if the text is still if the text is still a stream of bits if we can distinguish bits in in this stream so what is the uh, relationship between the bit stream and text Okay, you are answering. And at this, at the end, it's very difficult question. I think I are still, you are still writing. Okay, I will wait for a while before I get. Maybe I try to find something useful to provide you additional examples. Uh, maybe here. Uh, 
this class it's could be useful for us instrumentation right xml file here xml file is as you can see static class so it's impossible to create an object so it's not concrete class it is it is just definition of the functionality but here we are using different approach here we are we are using a library we are using library xml serializer that uh, uh, and this library we are using to serialize to serialize just uh, the, to serialize the, well, just the, any type actually it doesn't matter what type we are we are ser serializing here it is uh, here we are using this xml this this right file uh, as a generic method so we provide type we must provide type during using this right xml file but still we can use, there is no limitation of the type. We can use any type to serialize, to serialize a uh, state of the object. And now it is the question, if you are using, uh, if you are using something like this XML serializer to serialize, serialization, we can, you can see uh, serialized. It is just one instruction. It is just one call. Met, uh, it is one, it is one uh, method call, it's serialized. But still, uh, the question is how to distinguish values, how to distinguish um, members of the object that corresponds to the members of the type that must provide state of the object. Uh, not sure if we have uh, answer to this question. Probably you can uh, um, find here. No, it is just result. Not sure if I have an example. Uh, maybe you know. Uh, uh, so the answer, the second, the second possibility, how to define the, what is the state of the object. It's to use attributes. Using the attributes, we can distinguish all the uh, members of, of the class. So now we are talking back about the uh, design time. So we can distinguish all the data providers, all data holders, members of the type responsible to provide appropriate values during the runtime for serialization. Therefore, still we have full control. We, as a programmer, has uh, have has uh, we have full control on the um, what is the state of the object. So, in any case, we are responsible. Let me recall and stress it. In all of the cases, we are as a programmer responsible to know, responsible to define, responsible to be aware about the state of the object. What is the state of the object? Which members uh, is, uh, is vital for the state of the object? Mm. So attributes, it is the next possibility. But the last, but not least, uh, you have finished uh, answering. Let me ask you next question. But the next question is, what is an electronic signature? What is an electronic signature? Maybe you know, because it's signature, electronic signature, the term we are using, we are using even if the native language, even if, if our, if our uh, uh, everyday language. So probably you know what the, what, what the electronic signature is, but now let's try to answer this answer to this uh, question in context of this maybe serialization maybe something else uh, 
it is not related directly to this realization because because it's something it is something uh, additional but uh, it is uh, i think um, have some common features common features with the serialization but let's uh, get back to the serialization third and the last but not least possibility for us to distinguish what is important or not to this to 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 define the state of the object let's let's get back to the definition uh, here that we have three properties it is rules actually we can we and uh, vendor of the serialization library we can use the same rules and usually the rules uh, are well known and uh, usually the rules are typical so without any doubt we can apply the rules to use uh, existing serialization for example we can serialize this class without using the custom serializer using this uh, XML serializer and in, in in the unit as you can find many examples I think there is no there is no uh, I think good idea to waste time to to discuss all of this um, all of these questions but uh, uh, what the rule says the rule says that the state of the object it is set of public properties so values provided by the public properties may, may be recognized may be used to define the state of the object here for example it's true because this and this property it is uh, both are public so actually we can assume that values provided during the runtime from these properties uh, we can we can recognize as a state we can recognize as a state of of this uh, of the object created from this class but uh, here we must add something because as previously i said this property doesn't this property doesn't uh, is not part of the state so the value from this property is calculated therefore must not be recognized as the part of the state if it's not recognized as a part of state must be excluded from the definition of the state therefore it is not enough to say that we, we need uh, public properties it is uh, maybe we must add additionally that the properties must have getter and setter and both must be public therefore this therefore this way uh, the library could distinguish all the properties or relevant properties or important properties that must be used to uh, to convert to convert to uh, to the to convert to the stream of bits and back after the serialization the library knows the library can distinguish all the properties and use the properties to assign the values to get back to the state at the beginning just before serialization so rules that the property is public and the property has getter and setter public getter and setter of course the rules depends on the vendor it depends on the on the library we have a lot of libraries and usually these libraries use different rules so in all of the times you must check if the what what rules are used for example, uh, if uh, you have uh, together iSerializable interface that it's used to, uh, that it's inherited by the 
by the concrete class. And uh, we have, for example, properties, uh, rules about the public properties. And try imagine it's not on the screen, but try imagine that we also have appropriate attributes. So we have three things. The problem is which one, which one is the most important? Which one should be used? Which one should be applied uh, to uh, to to define the state? to define, to create uh, the state and to use uh, these members, to use all of the members during deserialization. Okay, I think that's all about the serialization. Any questions related to the serialization? I think that we don't have uh, the task related to serialization disappear from the program. It's uh, It was too difficult for your previous uh, Previous edition of this of this uh, curse. Therefore, I removed this this task. But I think the serialization is very very important for all of you and for your for your career. So it should be important for you, I think, to understand these things. Let me recall: state of, of the object serialization is applied during the runtime but it's defined during the design time. We are converting state of the object into the stream of bits and state of job responsibility to define the state of the object. It is programmers, the programmer must provide all the, all the details using the, uh, using the construct uh, related to the language according to the syntax. Usually it is public public uh, or not public uh, definitions and uh, and attributes in this language but in, in 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 other languages it could be it could differ but still the rules attributes and uh, custom serialization it's three methods we are using to convert the state of the object into the stream of the bits answering to the question what is the relationship between the text and the bit stream the answer is coding, coding system. In any, here also you can find it in the solution explorer. For example, this XML file. Oh no, sorry, but it's encrypted. It is, it is pure XML file. You can see in the first line, UTF-8. It is encoding system. So actually by this, we are saying that this text and the bit streams together are associated by a coding system. Coding system is just a table, table that says, um, that says relationship that provides definition of the relationship between the characters in the text and bit streams and uh, uh, and words bit words actually bit words for the selected characters because uh, usually the text is a, a sequence of characters and each character is a sequence of bits just a word bit word, uh, word that contains bits so we can easily convert the text into the bit streams and bit streams into the text without any without any doubts of course provided that the definition of the definition of the encoding system is is provided in many tools uh, for example here i have a, a tool Mm. Doesn't matter. Uh, it is Notepad, uh, Notepad double plus. But uh, here encoding, you can see that it's possible to convert uh, to convert encoding of the text from one to another one. If there is something, for example, we if we don't need if we don't need UTF eight, we can convert to any. For example, just to an, an ANSI standard. 
Uh, so it is speed stream. So uh, when uh, does a bit stream becomes text, uh, it becomes text after definition, after definition uh, of the encoding. Sometimes encoding it's not uh, uh, defined implicitly. Uh, sometimes uh, we must uh, we must assume encoding, and uh, it is it is typical situation. For example, we are using uh, UTF-8. We are not providing additional information about the encoding, but there is special encoding UTF-8 boom, for example, that uh, the first character or first couple of characters at the, at the beginning of the text actually provide the information about the encoding. So it is, it is the only modification, uh, only modification we need to provide after uh, converting encoding. Any questions related to serialization? I hope so. There is no there's no questions related to this. Therefore, let's get back. Let's get uh, forward. We have a couple of minutes. What time we must finish? Oh, so we have more or less half an hour. Uh, so next topic it is, according to our agenda, next topic it is an, uh, functional programming basis. Functional programming basis, and my question, first question is, what is functional programming? You must know it. What is functional programming? And first code, I'm going to investigate to explain delegates and events. Once more, we are going. Once more, we are going to the uh, term event term. Event is used in the task one <clears throat> to describe a state of the process. So actually, during the implementation of the task one, you are responsible to provide events uh, as a data. It's data, not functionality. We discussed it previously during the, the, the last additional consultancy lesson. It is not functionality, it is data. Data that describes all the changes in the process. Usually we are talking about the serialization when converting the state into the bit stream. But it is at selected time. Of course, the state of the object could change. But serialization ref reflects, contains only information, uh, contains only data that, uh, that we need to recover the state just before the serialization. If we are talking about the event from task one, we are talking about the business process, not about the, uh, about the language. And in this case, event, uh, in this case, event means uh, that it is description of the change in the process state. The state is similar to the state of the object. It is set of data. It is a selected set of data. That is important for us uh, to recover the state, to get back to this state. Typical example you have defining releases, defining tags in repository. It is also, it is just an event. So it contains all the information we need to get back to this state, to recover this state. In case of repository, it is the state of the text, the state of the files, the state of the content of the repository. In, uh, uh, in context of the business process, in context of the business process, it is recovering the state of the business process. For example, the state of the library uh, in a particular point in time. 
in a selected point in time. For example, if, if, the, if this point in time is for us, it's, it's important. Uh, okay, but now let's talk about the events uh, in context of the language. What the event means? So I have first question for you because it's not really, it's related. It's related to events, but in the language, not only in this language, in many languages, of course, depending on the language, the, the construct, the syntax could change. But usually the meaning, the semantics is more or less the same. Therefore, it's very important to understand to understand the meaning because we, we will get back to this meaning during the task two. During the task two event will be for us the most important thing. Uh, uh, and today also we'll get back to the, to the terms uh, inversion of control. Usually, your uh, inversion of control and dependency injection, it is this both terms are uh, in both of the cases we have pattern, but the pattern sometimes we can use as a, as a, mm, uh, um, they are similar, but actually there are no similarities at all. It means completely something, uh, something different, therefore we must we must understand what the what the control is, what what the control, what the meaning of the control in the abstract uh, in the in the native language means in terms of the of the language. Therefore, the question is what the delegate, uh, what is the delegate in the language terminology? I see that you finish answering this question. Therefore, let me ask you next. An answer to the previous. What is an event in the language terminology? But uh, in language terminology, sorry, because I. Uh, okay, because my my mouse. I uh, there's some problem with uh, with the second with the second screen with my second screen. But uh, now everything works. So here you can see that we have delegate word. So what is the what is a delegate in language terminology? Uh, of course, it is it's just a construct. But here we can distinguish that uh, after the delegate, it is something that recalls that recalls type definition. So first, the delegate is used as a term to describe type definition. Perform calculation, as you can see here, for example, we can use as a prefix to, the, to this. From this suffix, we can guess that it's variable, it's field, but uh, we are using perform calculation as a prefix to the variable it's typical use of the of the type so it is type we can we can use this delegate uh, as a type if it's type let's recall let, let's recall the definition of the type definition of the type says that it's set of values and set of operation of these values. So we must have precise definition of the possible set of values, possible for this, for the variable, for example, or for the argument in case of the method. For example, here we have x and y. Uh, and it's integer, so we know set of values we can use to assign using the uh, perform some method. But also we know a set of operation going to int definition f12. We can see there is a lot 
of methods, a lot of functionality that is coupled together with this with this type. So actually, it works on values from this from this set. So what is the uh, so the question is about the values. If it's type, what values can be assigned here to this variable? But uh, next observation is that this part of the text look like a signature of the method. It looks uh, something like this. It is more or less more or less, it's, it's the same. The name is different. Uh, but actually, the word is, is exactly the same. Uh, therefore, we must uh, assume, we must guess, that the delegates type is related to the definition of the method. And actually, this identifier means that it's type. And the values of this type is all of the methods that have this signature that has this that has this uh, uh, this header uh, all of the methods but it's really the method only one method so can we assign can we assign to this variable only one method? Uh, of course, no. Here, uh, here we are using only one method, but uh, but uh, the type says that the, 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 the delegate type, the delegate type says that it is a collection of methods. So actually, uh, the type. The, the the set of values the set of values for the delegates uh, means that uh, that uh, it is all possible all possible collections containing uh, containing uh, methods that are compli compliant with the signature we are using in the type definition we are using here And here you can in the here you can see, for example, mm, the question is the question is about the compatibility of the values, because as I said, it is uh, the value of this variable. It is collection of all of the collection including the situation where we have only one method, it is a situation, it is collection of all of the methods that has this signature. So why we cannot assign, we cannot assign, uh, we cannot use this, we can use this, this method. You can see why, because double, because int, so the signature is not the same. Additionally, uh, we are we are talking in this case we are talking about the compatibility of the ty type. So it's not uh, we it's not required it's not required that the signature is exactly the same as in the type, but it must be compliant. It must be uh, assign able. We can use. We can use uh, the values, for example, for the parameters, uh, and this this values must be assignable, assignable to formal formal arguments used in the definition. So, answering to the question about the delegates, actually we have two two possibilities. It is variable of the delegate type or it is type, it is delegate type. It is special kind of types that we can distinguish from the rest of the type, from the rest of the, from the definition of the rest of the types using the 
special word, keyword delegate. It is, let me recall, it is type or it is variable. Therefore, if you are talking about, if you are talking about, uh, if you are talking about uh, delegates, we should assign, uh, we should add that we are talking about the type or we are talking about the variable. Sometimes we can derive it from the context. Sometimes it's clear that talking about the delegate, we are talking about the type. Sometimes it's, uh, it's not clear. In these cases, we must additionally add that we are talking about the variable or we are talking about the type. So this line is not correct because the signature is not compatible with the signature we are using in the in the definition but here's an event ah additionally let me get back to the type if the delegate is a type so it is set of values but additionally it is also set it is also set of uh, uh, it is additionally set of uh, functionality set of methods we can apply we can apply to the uh, to the uh, to the to the value but the value it is uh, a collection of collection of uh, variables collection sorry collection of of methods collection of methods here we have only one method Second operation we have is, of course, uh, assignment. It's, of course, clearing the uh, clearing the, uh, the uh, collection. In this case, assigning new value for the variable, for the delegate variable, we are clear clearing, we are resetting, we are removing all the all the values we have in the collection. Therefore, actually assigning in the typical variable, assigning new value, it also it is also removing the previous value from the from the value holder from the variable and assigning new one. In this clay, in this case, uh, the value of the variable it is the collection, and we are clearing this collection and assigning. And assigning, uh, and assigning uh, new, and assigning new method. Actually, we are not assigning the method. Actually, because uh, we are assigning something, something that uh, that it's reference to the method. Reference to the method. Therefore, we uh, the name of the method we are using as the parameter to the something like constructor. Constructor. It is. It's like a constructor of this type. So usually we are, if we are de defining a class, the class could provide, must provide a constructor. Even if it's default constructor, it must be there. In this case, we are not having uh, uh, the syntax uh, that allows us to provide the constructor and, uh, and the, as a constructor, is the full constructor that has only one parameter, and this parameter is of this. In this, in this case, we can provide the name of the of the of the uh, of the method. So it plays the role of the constructor, but it's not constructor itself. And in your uh, releases of the language, we can remove this this constructor, and we can assign directly. We can assign directly um, methods. Uh, here, probably, you can see some examples. Oh, here, for, for, for perform calculator variable, as you can, uh, maybe I should uh, divide the, oh, perform calculator variable. It is it is this variable. Here we are creating this class, and here we are assigning 
we are assigning to this variable a value. But during the assignment, we are using the property, the, the method name, pick definition. You can see that it's method in a different class. Maybe it is in the same class, doesn't matter. Uh, but it is it is just a method. And we don't have here, we don't have here prefix with the delegate type name. It's just simplification. So the name actually the new as here, it's just simplification that uh, that is supported by this version of the language, but it must it, it's possible that it is not supported by the, by different different version of this language and in in other languages. It 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 should, it's possible that it's not it's not supported. Okay, so it's delegate. Next question it's because we must start discussion about the events because the time is rolling out let's let's describe the difference between delegate and event but i must add to this question that now uh, it is it is very good example that the delegate uh, the context of the delegate is not it's clear but uh, you must uh, you must be aware what the event is, because if you are talking about the delegate in this context, I'm talking about the variable. Therefore, let me back, get back to, to this example and to move it here. You can see that we have delegate type, we have delegate variable, but also we have an event here. And an event here, it is the definition is similar to the delegate. We have a keyword event in front of something that looks like a, looks like a type and something that looks like a variable. So let's check it, pick definition. And you can see that actually, yes, it's delegate type. So here we can compare the delegate as a variable, uh, event as a variable with the delegate as the variable too. So in both of these cases, uh, just a second, I... Uh, I wanted to to draw something. I must switch on my special tool. Here it is. Here it is. Uh, sorry. Here in the next line, we have variable, but it's event. But the type is delegate. It is similar to this. It is similar to this, except that we, in this case, in case of the um, delegate variable, we don't have event keyword in front of the type. So in both of the cases, the, the definition looks like a variable. Therefore, we must recognize it as a variable. And additionally, we can, we can see from the rest of the code that that they perform some method call it, it is this one, uh, this one uh, behaves as a variable. So we can assign, we can, uh, uh, we can assign new, uh, new values that the values uh, must be references to the methods. So actually it is set, it is set of references to the methods. So actually the definition is exactly the same as in the case of the delegate. In both of the cases, we are talking about the set of values, set of references to the methods. And uh, one operation, it is uh, one operation. It is to assign new value. Uh, let me perform. Do we have uh, an example here? 
Ah, here you can see next. Uh, you can see next operation. Next operation related to the delegate type. It's calling the methods. It's invoking of the methods. Therefore, this variable. It is special feature. This variable could be used as a method call in the method call instruction, method call statement, method call statement. Um, but it is variable. It is not. Uh, it is not just a name of the of the method. Therefore, we must we must also. Uh, consider scenario where this uh, scenario where this variable doesn't have any references. It's just null. So the 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 collection is empty. Therefore, uh, here we are using here we are using an operation to test the operation uh, to test if this variable is empty, if this variable is null. If it's null, uh, we just skip this statement. We just skip the statement. If it's not null, we are executing all the methods that are in this, there are in this, uh, mm, there's in this collection providing this, providing this, uh, Values as uh, uh, actual actual attributes actual attributes uh, that must be uh, of the type compliant with the type used to define the type of this delegate type. So it is it's calling. Do you think that the same is with perform calculator with this value? Do we have an example? Yes, we have exactly the same example. So here is still we are uh, we are executing all the methods. We are executing all the method. Uh, we are executing all the method provided that the collection is not empty. If collection is not is empty, we are just skipping. We are just skipping uh, execution. Uh, therefore, here we must uh, use additional functionality that uh, provides default value in case uh, we can uh, provide any real value. We must provide default value. So we can see that the delegate variable and the event variable actually behaves exactly the same. So what is the difference? I ask about the difference between the delegate and the expression, let's go to the, to the test. We must finish, but there's just one sentence. Where it's a uh, perform calculator. Here's, here's uh, an example. Perform some methods, it is a, uh, uh, let me the of course it could be your homework to analyze the code but the event it is perform it is exactly the same so you can see you can see the difference it is impossible to clear it is impossible here in the unit test. It is impossible to clear the collection. It is impossible. So this operation is not provided outside of the class where the event has been has been defined. Clearing it's possible only inside of the inside of this uh, inside of this method inside of this class. It is, it is uh, the only. It is not the only definition. Next, def ne next difference is that also the call method is in. It's uh, it's uh, also not available here. 
let me close it now uh, for example here we are trying we are trying to call the method assigned to this to this event it is also impossible so uh, actually the access to 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 to, to selected uh, to selected functionality is not is not provided it's not uh, is prohibited from outside of the class where the event is is created it, it is independent from the prefix public prefix before the event okay so uh, we are out of the time thank you very much for your uh, uh, for your contribution to this to this lecture let me switch